Hello there, you know me, it's Jeremy, and I'm going to be doing a little demo on as far as the jersey design contest. And if I bring up my computer screen and like that, boom, oh my gosh, it's crazy. So as you know, we've been having, if I could bring up the Chrome tab, uh, on our esports.depaul.edu, we do have the whole thing about the jersey design contest, and you can go here to learn a little bit more. Look at that. And one thing it does have is we do have this little a template, and I will have to say the template is very difficult to work with in some aspects, so I will show you why. So if we go to the believe this is right here so what I did to this file if you load it into Photoshop or if you don't have Photoshop and use Photopea to the same thing I'll show you the differences but if you um, if you load this original file into Photoshop it is extremely large I believe it was like 60 inches by like 50 inches it for something at least 80 megabytes I mean I have an okay gaming PC and it was struggling to even just use the paintbrush so I just took a screenshot and what I did is I brought it onto here so as you can see you got the front back sleeves now the problem that I have with this one is if you want to select the t-shirt it becomes extremely difficult if you don't know how to use Photoshop very left on the sidebar here there's called the quick selection tool it's in the same place whatever version you have I'm on 2020 I also know CS6, which is 2012 or 2013, I believe. Um, and what it does, it just allows you to make a selection of something that's on the screen. But uh, also a good thing to know with it is that it uses AI to get your selection well. Because let's say you take a selection and you don't like it and you just deselect it, it's going to forget that information. So if you select it, you get it all, and then you deselect the areas you don't want, it'll eventually learn until you get in the right area. There's also more you can do, but that's a different conversation. But when you come to this document, you want to like select the t-shirt. It looks like it's selecting fine, but if you zoom in, you can see that on a pixelized, because this, is, uh, this isn't this is a vector image, it's a rasterized, that it's hard to get that exact. And I mean, you can try and sit and select and mask, or you can sit here for like 20 minutes and try and get it exact, but it's just going to take, uh, it's a long, lengthy process that me personally, I don't, I don't see it fit, uh, to be 100% honest. Um, and, oh, I just saw Matt Beach's comment. Yo, let's go, poggers. Um, but if you go back to here, and let's say you wanted to create, like, a, a layer mask out of this, or you create a new layer, copy down to a new... Um, uh, layer you can see it's not exactly the best and especially let's say I went uh, I selected it let's say I wanted let's say like a dark mode jersey and we like colored it and actually we could just do this I'm going to undo this real quick let's say we put it in like this now when we hit control D to deselect or command D you can see it doesn't look good it is I mean if you submitted the jersey I'm sure it would still work but dimensions may be a little funky due to just the coloring being off so I, I feel that this isn't a great representation um, at least for me personally and the other thing is I ended up on this one over here I did a little marker over the whole thing so if I went and selected it it's going to be a more refined selection um, I'm I don't know why I was doing that just gonna take that away okay there you go now it worked uh, you can have a more refined selection with this and one thing I'd also recommend if you're using this you can go to select and you can expand it just a little bit few pixels just so you make sure it gets in there so when you go let's say we made this like a like a purple and you go it fits in nicer it's still not the best but it, it'll work um, but let's say you are using this and you want to make sure you put logos in just right. One thing you're going to want to make sure you do is have a good understanding of how masks work and how you can layer with different masks. So let's just start with the one on the very left that we had, uh, which is this little t-shirt right here. What we can do is we can make this a specific mask and eventually, well, I have to select it. Um, to select it, you hold control and you click the little icon where my mouse is. You'll click that and it'll give you a selection of what you have selected there. So you can create a little mask there and you can see anything that's in the white, you can edit. Anything in the black, you can't edit, at least for the time being. So what I'd want to do from here is let's say I wanted to make this like 
uh, this purple that I have, right? I can put that purple in, and from there, you know, you can always mess with opacities, different colors, and you can also put these little overlays on, which if you had different layers, which I'll show you in a different template I can share, um, that it'll, it'll change things just a little bit and give you a little bit more creative freedom. But with what we have here, so we have the main color in, and the next thing we're going to want to include is, I have the little DePaul Esports logo. I got it off of uh, our Microsoft Teams chat, but I'm sure you can find a PNG or a JPEG uh, online high resolution. So I have that. I brought that in, and what I'm going to want to do is bring it below the... Um, Blanking out here, the, the layer of the t-shirt, that, that would help if I knew that one. But you can go in there and you're going to notice that it's going to be behind. Now this is really good because if you want to make sure you get things nice and exact within the layer, you can always do that and you can also make it where you have a selection and you can put it, well you don't want to select the and move the mask direction. But you can make sure if you're trying to paint something, you can make sure it's lining up. That's my number one suggestion if you want to make sure everything is in the right place. But in this case, and for here, I want to make sure that I'm getting in the logo where I want it. And let's say I want to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to do that. And I'm holding shift click when I'm uh, making it smaller so it keeps the dimensions. Because if I don't hold shift, whoa, what's going on there? So I'm holding shift. And let's say I have the logo right here. I like it right on the arm. That looks nice. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is, hey, this the DE, or let's say the DEP isn't on the sleeve. Well, what do I do about that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you take the selection of the t-shirt, you can actually um, select only the part that's in the uh, DePaul, and you can uh, copy that off and paste it, well, Okay, we're going to try this again. You can take the selection of the t-shirt, go to the DePaul logo. You will actually want to inverse the selection, control shift i and what you can do here is you can copy this little DEP part, and if you um, put it right on top of where you originally found it, what you can do is actually delete it from the um, original selection. So now it's completely gone, or you know you may have to erase a little bit, but I'll fix that really quickly. So that's completely gone, and now you're like, oh wait, where did I put where do I put the other logo now that it's there? What you're going to want to do is actually take it, and you're going to want to bring the opacity down of it, because this is going to show that this is going to an opposite side. It makes one for designing it easier to see what you want to accomplish, and allows you to really see what you have on the sleeve there. So as you can see, right there at the sleeve, you have the part of the AUL and the end of esports, and the other side would have the DEP, and you can just bring that over to represent the same thing over here. One thing also recommend name your layers make sure you do that because you can have a giant project and it'll be very difficult if you don't know what's going on you just have like oh layer two layer five i mean you can go back and show them hide them whatever but it, it'll be very messy especially in a jersey design since you, you have a bunch of different parts so there we figured out how to get the logo on there i would recommend you know i'm pretty positive you can include the Chicago flag on it uh, because we do we do have that on or we did have that on the previous jerseys one thing as well you need to take into consideration um, if you are using a DePaul logo that is not DePaul eSports you need to make sure it is the right dimensions uh, they give you a little guide on what exactly to do with that so I would just double check to make sure you are using it the right way um, and then from there, if you wanted to, since you now know that, okay, you, you kind of have the, the right shirt or the back of it uh, started, you can go and then add in whatever you want. So I would recommend adding another layer in. I'm going to just call this like uh, design. And let's say to make it easy, I still kept it in the boundaries of the shirt. I wanted to, let's say I wanted with like white. This isn't a good representation of the color, so I'm going to actually change that really quickly. I'm going to take, make it a nice uh, DePaul blue. So let's say we made that a nice DePaul blue, and then we come into the shirt design, and I want to go to a white. So I'll change that to a white, and let's say I wanted to put like a smiley face on it, right? Don't, don't do this. Just don't do that. That, that we, we want actual serious designs with this. Um, 
but don't be lazy with it. So yeah, we have a nice smiley face. And as you can see, you know, let's say I wanted to even be a little more creative and I like made this bottom part completely white. You have the freedom to do that. And so now coloring on top, on top of another layer from the base color of the t-shirt allows you to do what you want within the actual jersey. The other thing you need to keep in mind by having these rulers on, which you can hit control R, it will allow you to have the placements just right. Because let's say you wanted to have it where where they meet, because of that U of promo thing, I'm going to get uh, erase that really quickly because the ruler will not work how I want it. Um, if you take the ruler and you put it exactly where like the top of the um, white is of the t-shirt, so I'm going to fix that really quickly. So let's say I had it go all the way up here. What I could do to mimic that, and I could just make sure that when this part is blue, that I color exactly to that line. So making sure you have asymmetrical or symmetrical dimensions is extremely good. I also would not recommend using just a brush to do it. You can always make shapes with the shape tool. And mine, I don't have other shapes loaded. So I have to go to like a uh, ellipse tool, rounded rectangle, whatever. And then from there you can cut out. So let's say I actually wanted to do that. I wanted to put in a nice like uh, rectangle in here. That'll fill in there and now it's on top. This is a very basic design. I personally, uh, if I was going to do this, I would put more time into it, make it more intricate. But by using some of these tools, you can also utilize it. One thing that's really cool um, I would recommend, let's say we went to like, use Unsplash if you're gonna take photos, especially for something like this. These are royalty free images. Let's say I wanted like a uh, wind scratched window. Something cool if you want to add like a little bit of texture to your images. Let's say these are terrible. These are not scratched windows. Let's just say white pattern. These, okay. I think I actually downloaded this one. Um, see hmm I guess I, you know let's just say here we go this could work okay this isn't the best quality but if we come here and we bring this in let's say I wanted to make that over the whole image so what I would do is I would make sure it's at the top above the other layers because let's say you want to apply it to all the layers I'd obviously make it a, just a little bit smaller so you know you keep a little bit more of the resolution uh, in this case I would try to get a little bit higher res image but you can come here and you can select the actual um, image or the uh, mask and you can create another mask of that image and now you're like oh wait it's covering the whole picture what happened to like my blue and the smiley face and the rectangle you can lower the opacity and now you can see that design is now coming on top of what you have so if you want to be a little bit more creative and let's say you know instead of doing like a basic camo or whatever you can add that on top um, and then from there, you know, obviously, if you have like uh, DePaul Esports, whatever other logos, you can add that on later. But those are the main tips if you're using this um, designer. Now, before we go to the other, a little bit more complicated one, we do have this prosphere.gear.com. And if you just go here and hit design now, I'll show you the process through here. It is a little bit simpler, but you you don't have as much creative freedom. And the website's very annoying to use. Uh, I will not lie. So you see, you got eSports and uh, where is it? The V-neck jersey. And we're gonna wait. And it's going to take a while for it to just load in, but they also limit you on the designs. That's the other thing I don't like about this. It doesn't allow you to truly like, create what you want to create. So if you look around, it's just like, it's going to take a minute to load. That's that's fun. But let's say we choose this one. We can then, you know, select uh, the fabric. Fabric doesn't really matter because in the end, uh, whoever ends up submitting the jerseys, I believe Courtney uh, will be doing that. I'm pretty sure she already has a set um, material. Oh, okay, I have to select that. Okay. And then when we go here, we can go and select the colors. Now, the problem with this is 
getting that exact hex code of DePaul Esports, which if you know you, you uh, hit B uh, to get the brush and then hold Alt, you can select the well. If I um, we'll just go here, make it easy. If I go here and you go to the color, you can see the hex code is right here where I have highlighted. Um, that hex code there is the exact DePaul color. Same if you did the red, white, black, uh, etc. So if you come back here, it, you may be a little bit limited on it, and you can even go here. So let's say we just made it navy. That looks the closest to what we have for DePaul. It's going to take a second to load. You're, you're able to see a little bit more. You can mess up the secondary and the accent. Okay, I have to select those. I hope this website doesn't die on me by me doing multiple things at once. Okay, cool. We got the colors. And then as far as numbers, we don't do numbers. Uh, we just have the team name. So we have like DePaul University. Other thing, the text, it, I don't like the text options. They're eh. They're all right. With Photoshop, you have a much wider uh, variety of text. If I go back and I look through all my text, I have some different ones because I've installed different text uh, options, but you have a bunch. Also, if you're part of CDM, um, you do have this whole Adobe suite, so you can get Adobe font. And like, there's one I found for like when I do the highlight reel, I found this one called Prohibition, and it actually looks uh, pretty similar to... Um, uh, the normal DePaul Esports logo, so I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So if you are using that, you can also always look up uh, Prohibition on Adobe Fonts. But you go here, you get DePaul University, and you probably want to make it a color that contrasts with what you have. You don't want a gray on black. You don't want black on black. If you know what the monochrome, or not the monochromatic wheel, the, um, um, there's, I can't remember, okay, I, I guess this works. This is it, this isn't the monochromatic wheel, uh, but color scheme. So if you look at this, colors that go opposite each other complement each other the best. So you may want to take that into consideration. You wouldn't want to do a blue with a green. Those are pretty close to each other, so they don't complement each other well. So blues with yellow to orange to a little bit of red work relatively well. And especially with DePaul's colors, blue and red, they complement each other relatively well. Or you can always do white. So make sure, you know, you, you're just changing that and if it'll load, I have to select a location. Okay. So we'll put it on the front. If we give it a second. Mm-hmm. We're letting it load. Okay, there we go. It's a little small and so I mean you can make it bigger from there. Uh but really from there you can you can just go with the flow and figure it out. So Obviously, the name is a little too long, but like I was saying, it looks relatively bland. This uh, design maker, at least for me, I like to be creative, and this doesn't allow me to do that. Um, and names, you don't need to put that, uh, just because you need it's just DePaul University, DePaul Esports, and whatever it is. And so you don't need to really worry about much other text than that. You can also always look at the jersey we have right now. Uh, I have it in my closet. I can go run if anyone needs to see it. Um, I do not have. I don't believe I have a picture with me of it. But okay, you have to put text. Let's just put uh, esports. Let's just say we have that on the back, and we're going to wait. I don't think we'll, we'll be putting anything on the back, but just to make things easier so you can see everything. But then when we go to graphics, this is where. I found it for me just a, a little bit, eh, it wasn't great as far as interface wise. And this image size, if if you don't know the image size and sometimes it's too large, which in this case you could go over the size, it may be a little difficult to work with. So let me upload. Let me just upload like, oh, okay, I have the tree of wisdom. Oh, it gets you with the email. Okay, we'll just put a random email. See, okay, same same exact issue. It just becomes very difficult, and also if it doesn't fit, you can be like, mm, I'm going to pay a $25 fee. Don't do that unless you feel like you have to, but you shouldn't have to spend money to do this. But 
so my image doesn't fit the restrictions and I was having the same exact issue yesterday when I was trying to do it because I I didn't know what I could get to fit and I kept trying a bunch of different images none of them worked and all of my images I've saved are around 300 dpi and I can always go and see the pixels of them but it's just very frustrating when it wasn't working and I was sitting there so I couldn't get I couldn't get anything to work with it so I, I still don't understand why so that's why I stray away completely from using this but that gives hopefully if you have any questions you can shoot them in the chat stop me anytime I I'm, have my other monitor I keep looking at it to see if anyone has anything but just feel free to stop me so the one that I really have enjoyed using is I found this template and what's great about it is it is a 2D image but it has this 3D texture of a t-shirt on top and what that allows you to do is you can um thank you Matt you're a great guy I look at him what a nice guy um what this allows you to do is it looks better than just looking at a blank just 2D image and you don't it you can't really imagine, like, I'm wearing this right now. Oh, this is what DePaul Esports is going to look like, or this is what the front's going to look like. So, um, with this PSD file, which I, I can create an Outlook, anything like that, or a OneDrive folder, and I can share this with you guys, it is a little bit more complicated. There, I've tried to make the layers as simple as possible, just so it makes the most sense. But one thing that's very helpful with this, I'm going to show you guys a little something. If we go to, we'll start with the front. So in reality, all it is is, so I've taken out one of the, um, oh, what's it called? The, uh, I'm blanking out here, one of the layers. So I'm going to remake it really quickly. So let's say we wanted to make this like a deep blue, uh, like a DePaul blue. Let me actually get the um the DePaul color really quickly so if I come here and I need to actually copy that color really quickly let's copy that no problem come over to here and then we're gonna paste it inside of here what I can do is I can take a little image I don't know why the color changed again that's cool what we're going to do is go over the front of the t-shirt and make a little square. The nice thing, because it is over a mask, it'll automatically jump to what you have here. The one downside of using this uh, maker is that because of how I have it set up with the different overlays, the colors are going to be a little bit weird where the shadows come in. But I think it gives a very good representation of what you may see if it was in with right lighting. And so what you can do with this, if you take off this dark piece, you can see all it is is a 2D image of the um, of the t-shirt. But when you put that little piece on top, it adds that 3D to it. And in reality, all this is is a white t-shirt. And I just have it on a linear burn overlay just because that I think it does it the best over. At least uh, getting details of what's going on on the shirt and below. So now that I have... Uh, below what the t-shirt color is and on the very top I have this dark layer I should probably rename that just to if anyone uses this just to make a little bit more clear this is the actual t-shirt so I'm going to uh, change that really quickly so we have the real t-shirt on the top you want to make sure anything you do is underneath the edit of this masked portion because this is going to go below the actual t-shirt so let's say I wanted to go from here and add the DePaul eSports logo. I'm going to just bring that over to this PSD file. Ah, uh, I don't like that. I don't like when it does that. So because it is within that mask, what's cool is it stays right inside of it. And this makes it very easy for me to use. And let's say, um, to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to bring it above really quickly because what I'm going to do then is just kind of mess around. We're going to make this quite a bit smaller. You want to have it visible, but you don't want to have it overbearing in the image. So actually, I'll most likely want to put this on the inside sleeve. Um, I don't know if we have any 
uh, specifics as far as logo has to be on right or left sleeve. I would double check on that. I need to double check on that myself. But let's say we have it just where I want it. I, I found the spot. It looks nice. What I'm going to do is put it right back under. And as you can see, if you zoom in, you have the details of the shirt actually go on top of the logo. So even though this is a 2D effect right there, with that overlay, it makes it look 3D and allows you to get a, an actual representation of what you may actually see when the t-shirt uh, comes into fruition. So, like I said before, another thing you're going to want to do is make sure that um, with, with this image that you can actually see the uh, other part of the DePaul. So what I'd recommend to do that, what I just did there is, so I took the image here and with the mask, nothing can exceed this mask. So if I do an invert selection, control shift I or command shift I on Mac, what this does it allows me to select anything that's outside of the t-shirt. So I just copied that outside selection from the logo and I just pasted it above. And now when I put it above, I can see that it's now outside. And what I'll do with this one is I will, you know, lower the opacity. And from there, outside DPU logo. And then this one, shirt, DPU logo. Remember, don't forget to name your layers. It will save you later, or help you out later. So then what's nice about this, which makes it really, uh, it makes it much nicer than what I was using before, is that when you come to this real t-shirt, one thing you can do, is let's say you wanted to add accents to the shirt. It makes it much easier to see. Let's say on the sleeve right here, I go down to it. And let's say I wanted to make like a selection on right along the seam. One tool that I use that is helpful instead of a quick selection tool, because the um, t-shirt it, is going to be a little bit harder for Photoshop to recognize, oh, this is a um, direct object I need to select. It, it, I would recommend, you, you could use this, it'll work just as well. It'll take a little bit longer, which uh, I'll show you, but I'll make a little rough uh, edit. And thank you, it's Nazi. We are getting it. You know it. Um, also, a quick selection tool, it, it's going to be a little funky as well because it's going to try and think, oh, you, you're you selecting the whole t-shirt. We're going to jump to that at random points. Um, I'm just going to do this a little rough just so just for time's sake so you don't have to sit here watching me do this for like an hour. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another logo un or another layer under the edit. And when I put this linear burn back on to um the top layer, what I'm going to do first though, I'm going to create a little white and we're going to just fill this in with white. So now if we go to the real t shirt, put back the linear burn. We go back to this guy. I forgot I had the... I keep putting on... There we go. Okay. I kept using the wrong color. That wouldn't help. So it looks very rough. Um, but like I was saying, I went very quickly with the quick selection tool. You can sit there and make sure it gets along the seam. That's what I would do if... Uh, I, don't, I don't want to bore who is in here, though. But as you can see, now I have a little bit of highlight. And you can also see with an actual t-shirt here, kind of the dimensions of what you may need to do that. It makes it much e more it's easier to actually accomplish that. And so you could do the same thing and color in this part right here. Let's say I, I select like this little sleeve part. We're gonna make this very quick. Again, it's going to look not the greatest, but see the tool learns relatively quickly. We're going to make a, another layer and we're going to paint this white. Um, again, right sleeve bottom part I don't know what you call that of the t-shirt um, but now you can see you've created an accent and because you're able to see kind of like general dimensions you can always come back to this and kind of smooth it out if you if you want to um, so something like that that isn't exactly the best because you are going over the seam but like I said you can spend a little bit more time and try and get that a little more exact more than like the 30 seconds I put into it let's say you did that for all three parts. So let's say I came over and uh, I did this here, which again, I wouldn't recommend just 
freehanding it. To be fair, that looks much better than the other one, but if you want it to be really exact, using that a quick selection tool should be a little bit easier. But now, as you can see, we have the logo down, we got some accents, then you're like, I want to have some sort of design. And if you look at a previous year's one, this is what Sam Gromit, uh, what he did. And I'm pretty sure he used the same template that I'm using right now. Um, I was talking to him a little bit, and I can see why he may have wanted to do it. Um, what he did is he used the different logos that we have. One thing we have to be careful about, you can't have the demon logo. Um, you can't use the... Uh, I would have to write this down, the different things you can and can't use. But just stick with like a DePaul Esports, have a nice pattern, kind of what we have right now in that black jersey from two or three years ago. Or four years ago, actually, when that one came out. Um, but as you can see here, he has, Sam made those accents, he was able to create a pattern within it, and he was also able to get the DePaul Esports logo. So in this case, if you wanted to create a pattern, let's say I wanted to make, um, yeah, I, I know, that's what, that's what I thought. I thought it was pretty neat. I know Sam put a lot of time. He's the one who actually designed the one we have right now. Uh, so uh, that's pretty neat. Um, but so... What you can do here with this, let's say we wanted uh, a bunch of uh, like rectangles, and to make this easier on time, I'm just going to do this through uh, drawing it on. So let's say we did something like this, and man, that fill did not do what I wanted. But let's say we have a little bit of this, and then let's say I changed it to like a gray, and put another one on. So, okay, so let's say we have something like this, and then let's say we do another one. And I know my drawing skills are amazing. One thing that you can do within this, you can still see the actual layers within it, but it looks weird to have this very harsh, just change in color. So you can actually lower the opacity. And the cool thing about it is that you'll still get that blue tint onto it. If you don't want the blue tint, what you can always do is put it above um, what's going on. So let's say we put it at like the very top. The only issue you're going to run into here is because we're using this layer mask with this uh, opacity, not the opacity, the uh, overlay being that linear burn, you're going to get that blue onto all layers. So you could always just bring it onto a, a brand new layer here and just kind of mess around with it from there. Um, so though that's my recommendation with that um, and then what you can do if you want to make it exactly precise well and you don't want that blue tint necessarily what you can do is you know select that and then delete anything that is not uh, going along the t-shirt so that's very basic on how to do that you can always get more complicated I've seen designs where they have a whole intricate like weaving of like webs and stuff like that um, but this should be able to give you a good start on exactly what to do. And uh, the last area, as far as designing the Photopea, this is the exact same. This is, I'll open up the um, jersey template, and you'll see the tools are arranged a little bit differently, but it's still the same thing. All the layers are the exact same. This is completely free to use. You can come here, and let's say I wanted to, uh, where's my shape tool? Make this like a deep blue and we put this guy I hope this is the front this is the back that's not going to work we'll do this instead oh I have it red okay you have to change the fill up here that's my bad but it's same same exact thing just work with it from there so it works out pretty well um, if anyone runs into any issues uh, if you need me to send this to you feel free to reach out to me Discord on the DePaul Esports server. I'm um, double checking my name on there. It's Jeremy Spoons. Uh, feel free to reach out or it's kitten number 6757. So yeah, feel free to reach out to me on there. But I, I hope this gives a good just understanding of what exactly, how to make it, how to make it look nice. Um, but if anyone has anything, I'll kind of keep this open for the next minute or so, just so you can get any questions in. But 
Uh, I look forward to seeing some of these designs, and it'll be interesting. I'm going to try and put one together because I'm not a huge graphic design type of guy, but um, I do enjoy doing things like this, and it, I don't know, I find it fun. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, I, I meant to bring this up earlier, is uh, I know Courtney talked about the, like, a bull thing. Actually, mine came in the mail today. I was really confused, like, I, I got a message about um, mail in the student center. I was like, wait, what? What did I order? But the bulls came in. They're actually pretty cool. I really like them. You got the DePaul logo on there. You got a couple bulls. And then, you know, you got your spoons. These spoons heads like my name. They're actually pretty neat. I like those. But And, of course, you got your cereal and Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes. They're pretty good. You, you got to put them together. That's what you have to do. But, yeah, so be on the lookout for that if you, um, uh, what's it called? If you have it. Uh, the other jersey? Yeah, I'll be right back. Let me go get it from my closet. Um, uh, yeah. So, this is the other jersey that we have right now. And so, like I was saying, you know, Sam has the uh, DePaul logo. And the DePaul logo is also on the sleeve. And uh, you also have on the front and then on the back as well. And it's just very basic design, but it's uh, visually ple or appeasing or pleasing, whatever the word is. I know, Matt, Frosted Flakes is the bomb. Um, but... I believe that black jersey, we did have the Chicago flag on it. I don't have access to it. I can try and find pictures of it. Um, but I'll try and include it on one of our next social media posts uh, about the jersey design contest. And this is the jersey design contest. It's only open till the 14th. So you only have till next Friday. It's crazy to think that it's really only a week away. Um, but I'm going to end the broadcast here again. If you have any questions need me to send you this uh, template, I'm more than happy to do that for you. If you need help with uh, doing Photopea or Photoshop, I'm the guy to reach out to. I've, I have like four or five years of experience through different classes in my own projects. So hope you guys have a great day and thanks for tuning in. Thank you.